I'm not going to tell you the ending. It's more complex than you might imagine. But what else would you expect from Tolkien? You'll just have to read the book. Like Gandalf and all the other members of the Fellowship, you'll want it as a lifelong companion. Because to get to that moment in the story where Frodo finally faces his destiny on the slopes of Mount Doom requires a considerable investment of both time and effort. Perhaps that's why people so love the book. After all, you only get out of life what you put into it. Reading Tolkien is like entering a vast panorama. More than any other novel, The Lord of the Rings isn't just a book. It roots itself so firmly in a way of living that it reawakens in us many of the things we need to hold dear. When I stand somewhere like this, I can really understand what Tolkien was driving at. We're in such a hurry today. Places like this encourage us to move at a more natural pace. To say that they're important would be an understatement. They're vital. It's not too late. The Lord of the Rings reminds us we have the freedom to choose. It's a book that champions the values of an almost forgotten way of life and shows us that being is more important than having. It's about history, it's about culture, but most of all, it's about our deep connection to the land we live in. Truly for me, this is the one book to rule them all. Well, this book has inspired films, games, and fantasies. To people like Ray Mears, who practically worship it, Lord of the Rings is the best book in the known or unknown universe. But though there are many who love it, there are plenty who hate it with a passion as well. So do you want it to be voted Britain's best loved book? Or would you rather vote for anything else? It's up to you. Well, let's look at the leaderboard. Now, at the moment, as you can see, uh, Lord of the Rings is in number one position, as it's been from the start, closely followed by Pride and Prejudice. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, though, shot up to number three. It went up from three from, uh, to three from sixth uh, on the base of last week's film, followed closely by To Kill a Mockingbird. That went to four from position seven last week. So we'll catch 22, uh, have the same effect tonight. That's at number 11 at the moment, uh, just above uh, Wuthering Heights, which is there with its sister book, uh, uh, Jane Eyre. But the contest between Catch-22 and Wuthering Heights tonight, something of a battle of the sexes. 80% of Catch-22 voters so far are men, and 80% of Wuthering Heights voters are women. Who's going to win out tonight? Well, if we look down to the bottom third, uh, Gone with the Wind has uh, gone like the wind up from bottom position uh, to uh, number 19 after last week's film. But uh, since the uh, big read was launched, uh, more of you have been visiting your local library to borrow the books on our list. Overall, figures are up 20%. But issues of Birdsong have done rather better than that. Uh, they have more than doubled this year. So well done, William Haig. Uh, but what are library voters, uh, what are library users voting for? Uh, this week, the big read went to... So, I left Vietnam alive. 